Hello everyone, welcome to another episode on our 2017 corn growing series. Today we'll be continuing our conversation about the birds and then later on we'll look at how some of the corn are doing. Right now I'm being a little bit distracted by the northern mockingbird that's overhead and making his call so I'm not sure if the mic picks it up or not. With regard to our corn and birds this year we ran into a huge challenge where they would pick the corn seeds out the ground or when they sprouted they would pull the corn sprouts and uh, we left we were left with very little corn and with corn you really need a thick patch in order to get pollination and a good number of ears back so we had to re-sow. In doing so we tried to uh, come up with new ways. One of the ways was night sowing with the idea that by doing it under darkness the bird is not watching us during the day, is not awake and watching where we're planting our corn seed and that seems to work uh, but subsequently when the corn sprouts they know that there's corn in the ground and they would go and dig them out. We tried throwing straw on top and for the most part that works but this year they've been very eager um, and it turns out that it's the time of year where they were nesting and so they were very hungry and they had many uh, new mouths to feed. All the birds have since hatched and I've noticed that they're they were around a lot and then now they've kind of flown away and they're not here uh, as much. So if we were to sow our corn today, we're probably going to not run into an issue where they're going to dig them up. Um, but in any event, we're just trying different ways to go around them. We tried the night sowing and then we tried throwing straw, but they came and dug everything up. So eventually we had to go and build a cage around it. One, one viewer suggested that we use a tool and I think that's a really good material to use so that's something that I'm gonna look into getting uh, for uh, just garden use to protect seedlings or to protect fruit so uh, in, the, in the meantime I had some bird netting and I uh, didn't get a chance to go out to get some tool so use whatever was around uh, bird netting in a combination with the uh, framing of an old uh, greenhouse but then it was since discovered that we can use another uh, material tool to protect our seedlings and that is with seed trays. Uh, this is a very introvert discovery in trying to protect some zucchini sprouts. There was a seed tray, uh, I guess a liner or whatever, lying around and quickly threw that on top and then it was realized that we can use that for our corn. So if you uh, have issues with birds, these seed trays are a really great and convenient um, way to protect seedlings. They can be stacked up at the end of the season and stored away and then they could be propped up really quickly. As uh, opposed to these, um, this frame here you have to put it together and then you have to deal with bird netting and if you've used bird netting it's it's like a, a real net. It just gets all over the place and, and things catch and it's uh, very troublesome. Uh, so another way is to sow corn in seed seed starters and then uh, have them in a protect area and once they're a good size they can be transplanted uh, so uh, we're gonna do we're gonna show uh, how, how to do that just uh, another example of uh, ways to go around uh, issues with birds is to transplant them so here's an illustration of how it's kind of cumbersome and tedious and time-consuming to both take set this up and then also to take it apart because this stuff catches everything. So here's our corn patch. Over there um, was a patch of the Burpee XP Triple Crown that we sowed and then the birds kind of picked away some of the corn and the plan was to re-sow, transplant these guys in that space. I didn't have the heart to pull out some of the corn so now they're, they're there and um, it's probably best that I just pull them all out 
and plant these guys in, but uh, I just, I don't know, I just can't do it. So what I'm gonna do is uh, find a way to tuck all these plants in there. It's gonna be really dense, and we're probably gonna need to use a granular fertilizer with high nitrogen a number to help it along, because I think we're gonna lack uh, the proper nutrition to feed all the plants that are here in this dense growing area. On this side are the heirloom golden bantam corn that we re sowed. Super hole. Oh. You can walk on it. You can walk on it. Uh huh. You dropped it. Yeah, put it in a different hole. Oh. Put it in a hole. It's okay. We can wash it. Good job. Good job, boy. We're done. I think we're done. And they are growing really well. I'm not sure if it's the variety or it's because it's from seeds that we collected and, and from last year and from the best part of the corn. These were started much later. These were the re sow of the corn that the plant, birds have picked out. And look at their height. The, these guys got a head start, and these guys have caught up and basically um, outgrew them. The, the leaves on the golden band corn look to be very slender. This is the white corn, the hybrid corn. It's a little bit more wide. So, so yeah, we're gonna do that. We're gonna transplant this in there as an illustration of another way to grow corn. And uh, ideally, direct sow is better, but in many instances for uh, some growers, this is probably the best, best bet for you. So uh, it's also something that you can do. And probably if you're doing this method, I would recommend using a granular fertilizer, something with a high nitrogen number, because it needs to catch up. There's not enough nutrients in here for them to grow. So uh, yeah, use... Uh, granular fertilizer so they can catch up otherwise they may be stunted and hopefully hopefully that these guys can catch up and hopefully they didn't get stunted because they've been in here probably a week longer than they should and I, I've been holding it off just so that we can make this episode to show this illustration. I'm gonna use a hori hori knife it's a Japanese gardening tool it's got a sharpened edge for cutting and a serrated edge for sawing very useful tool it's uh, it's gonna be a good investment if you know you're gonna be gardening and one that I use in place of a trowel, a gardening trowel. So it's really good for transplanting. You can, you can dig deep quickly and transplant plants that, are, that have long roots. The roots are already coming out the bottom. All right, we're gonna assembly line this. It's best to get all the corn out. I think I'm just not gonna save this just for the betterment of the corn. We're gonna tear them out of the uh, starter things. Here's a good illustration of our Hori Hori knife. You can use it to saw apart the uh, container here. Okay, 
let's get in there and transplant our corn in there. We have our corn transplanted and it's planted pretty densely. So we're gonna keep an eye on it. Hopefully it'll grow. Um, there's a lot of other stuff blocking it from getting a decent amount of sun now. So that might be one of the challenges. To make up for it, we're gonna throw a bunch of uh, composted steer manure here and maybe some granular fertilizer uh, and hopefully we get corn out of here. Over here is golden bantam corn. And as far as feeding, I've been top dressing them with steer manure probably at least twice a month. And then the other key thing is to give them a lot of water, lots of water. This way we have our earth tone corn. This is an ornamental corn and they're growing Pretty good now. Um, getting close to my chest height now. So those those are the earth tones. I think it's pretty neat that there's a bell curve action going, and I guess it makes sense because towards over there, there's not as much nutrients and probably not as much water. So I have to make sure I water beyond the corn. And same over there. Let's go look at our other corn patch. This is where we have uh, the three sisters happening. This is our golden bantam corn, and it's pretty tall now. Um, down below is our Lakota squash. It's, it's growing out now. The uh, Kentucky wonder beans, they're, they're actually a pretty slow growing bean, I've noticed. And once again, that bell curve uh, effect happening. So in the future, you got to make sure to water beyond and make sure there's a little bit more good soil on the end there. But I suppose uh, we're probably concentrating on here and everything on the ends are just bonus. This is the Burpee Triple Crown XP and we have the tall ones growing here over there, not sure what's going on. Uh, probably not going to get good size ears out of these, but we'll just keep them here. Our soybean or edamame, probably not a very ideal candidate for three sisters. They need a lot of sun and they also need a lot of nutrients. So they're probably competing with our corn for both. So something to re redo next year, not just grow the edamame by themselves. All right, let's go out front and look at the uh, other ornamental corn. Here's a quick shot of our peach sunflower. I guess this is how it, it forms. It kind of uh, stays clustered. Let's go and look at our ornamental corn and swing around and zoom out a little bit. Come this way where our ornamental corn is. Out in front is a giant what, uh, giant pumpkin. This is the Pacific Giant. It's growing out towards the sidewalk. We're going to train it to grow underneath uh, our olive tree in this giant open area. But the star of the show today is uh, the variegated corn here. Not sure what causes them to have more 
pigmentation than others, but this one's really pretty. And when the morning sun comes in and it comes at a low angle, it lights from underneath and this plant glows. As far as Three Sisters, the red warty thing is down here. And once again, we have some Kentucky Wonder beans, pole beans. And these guys aren't as tall. So they probably need more water since it's the front yard. I don't come out as often as I should to water the plant. And it probably needs more uh, feeding as well too. But hopefully we get some corn and, and ha at least have seeds to plant next year. So in our raised planter here, we have Hawaii number nine heirloom corn. The seeds were sent over from a viewer and um, we have four rows of them marked by those tags and hopefully we get a good amount of uh, corn back. All right, folks, that's gonna be it for this episode. This coming weekend is Memorial Day weekend, the unofficial start of summer and corn is usually part of the celebration. So I hope you guys enjoy your weekend and have lots of corn and hopefully We'll have some to enjoy from our garden later in the year. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. This is where we have one of our wasabi plants growing and I found a bird's egg, one, the casing of an egg that had already been hatched. And looking up, there's a bird's nest in here. So they're nesting everywhere this year. Check it out, a used bird's nest.